God wants you to step out and believe him. You think, well, how am I going to do it? God will make a way if you'll just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers. And I pastor the Evangel World Prayer Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Did you know we're getting close to the elections? And it's very important we understand something. We can't vote against God. This is not really an election about personalities. Sometimes the guys who have the nicest personalities, they turn out to be the worst ones. And then people who seem to be bland and maybe uh, they're not as charismatic, they turn out to be steady Freddy. They turn out to be the reliable people. But the most important thing is not what party you're a part of. What's important is what the Bible says in voting the Bible. I have something I want to send to you. It's entitled, uh, Don't Vote Against God. And it has four biblical principles that if you violate, there's a price to pay. You cannot vote against God and God's principles. There are four principles that you have to stay true to in this coming election. I want to send it to you and then inside of that, and you can see it right there, is a, is a card that I ask you to fill out and sign and date. And it says, I will not vote against God. I will vote for biblical principles. I ask you to sign it. I ask you to put that card in your in your um, Bible. And if you would like additional copies of this book to give to your friends, to your pastors, uh, we'll be glad to send it to you. You may want to order a hundred of these and we'll, uh, we'll send those to you. But I think this may be the most powerful book that you've ever read at this time for this election because this could be the most powerful election in our entire life and also in the last 100 years. So don't vote against God. We're in the midst of a spiritual warfare. But right now I wanna take you into our services where I'm speaking on the power of the Holy Spirit. And as I go through the book of Acts, you're gonna be amazed what almost 90% of the time when the Holy Spirit speaks, what he speaks about. Listen to this. And so the Holy Spirit empowers people to make wealth. In the 13th, 14th, and 15th chapter, you see how, how Paul and Barnabas, they went to Antioch. And they're worshiping God, and suddenly the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work I've called them to do. And so the Holy Ghost spoke to them. And for two years, they traveled from nation to nation, from city to city to preach the gospel. You know what that says? The, it costs money to travel. It, it, that, that wasn't free. And there was, a, there was an entourage that began to travel with him. That shows whatever God tells you to do, God will supply the money for you to go. So in, the, in chapter 16, they go to Philippi. And as they go into this strange city, he's praying, now, Holy Spirit, you direct me. Holy Spirit, I don't know where to go. God, Holy Spirit, now, you've got, you've, got, you've got the people. And as he's going, he bumps into this lady. First person he meets, he's a, she's a businesswoman. Her name's Lydia. She's a seller of purple, and she's got money. And he talks to her about the Lord. She said, she said I, I, I'm ready to receive. She gets born again. She gets baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. And says, look, well, I've, I've got a place to stay. I've got a huge house. I've got uh, rooms over here. Stay here. So he establishes the church out of her home. And then God begins to bless her. And so he writes in the book of, of, to the Philippians. And he writes to Lydia. He said, you sent once, you sent again and again. 
And God's going to bless you. God's going to supply all of your needs. And isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit directed him to a woman who had the ability to prosper and make money and then increased her so she helped spread the gospel and pay for the second and third missionary journeys. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Holy Spirit not only gives you power to cast out devils, he gives you power to make money and to prosper and to live a good life in the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel the word of God here. There's, there's some folks here. God wants you to move out of your neighborhood. It's infested with drugs and alcohol. And God wants you to step out and believe him. You think, well, how am I going to do it? God will make a way if you'll just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, one time I, I was building a, rate, a TV station down in Bowling Green. And that station, we built it on a rock quarry. Right there on the edge of this rock quarry. And we ran out of money. So I'm praying. I'm praying, God, I don't know what to do. We need $450,000. Lord, show me what to do. And I, I, so I, I'm fasting. I'm praying. And the Lord impressed me to call First National Bank in Nashville, Tennessee. I'd never, uh, I didn't know anything about the bank. Didn't know anybody there. And I called and I said, uh, I'd like to speak to a loan officer, a commercial loan officer. So they connected me and this guy answered the phone. Uh, he said, hello, my name is Willie Deal. I said, no, that's not your name. He said, yeah, my name is Willie Deal. I said, that is the best name I've ever heard for a banker, <laughs> Willie Deal. And he started laughing. I started laughing. We started talking. And before our conversation was over, he said, well, I believe we can help you out. And he loaned us $450,000. Now, that was the Holy Ghost that led me. God will direct you. God knows where the money is. And so you, you read in the 17th and 18th chapter, he goes to Athens. Then he goes to Corinth. And when he got to Corinth, he meets this um, couple. Their names are Priscilla and Aquila. Say that with me. Priscilla and Aquila. Now this is a couple. They're mentioned six times in the Bible. How many times? Six, six times. Five times her name is is mentioned first. Now, that's unusual because in that culture, even when I go to Korea in Asia, you don't do that. You mention the man's name, and then you may mention his wife's name. But you never mention the wife's name first unless she's a spiritual leader, and in this case, she was the preacher. And that's why out of five of the six times, it is Priscilla and Aquila, not Aquila and Priscilla. So she had the anointing. She was called as a preacher in that family. And it's a sign that there are many women here that are called by God into the ministry. And you're seeing right now a season that God is stirring up the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your life. On June the 3rd, an angel came to me and Margaret and this angel began to speak to me of things that were beginning to happen. And we're now just beginning to see them go in. I saw, I saw our nation on fire. And I told Margaret, I can't tell if those are forest fires or if those are cities on fire. Guess what? It's both. It's both. You're beginning to see the fires there. I saw hurricanes. Now, you got two of them going to hit. It's never happened before until, uh, except to the depression in the 30s. There's going to be a troubled time, but what I saw, God was raising up women, women to pray, but not just praying by yourself, but coming together in a spiritual army of spiritual warfare. And men, let's be honest, most women can pray better than the men. I mean, they, they get down to the nitty-gritty, and when women get together and they begin to pray, there's a force that rises up. I'm also saying God is releasing spiritual gifts in these meetings. God is releasing the gifts of the Holy Ghost, of prophecy, of wisdom, of healing, and of miracles. But Priscilla, she was the preacher, and they formed a company. They formed a business with the Apostle Paul, and the Bible says they were tent makers. Now, if you look that up, they, they had a contract with the Roman government. They didn't make these canvas tents. The only time they used canvas was on ships. 
the Romans demanded leather tents. They, they would go up into the north part. They had leather tents. And so they had a contract with the Roman government to make leather tents. And for wealthy people, they would make them tents. Now, to give you an idea how much a leather tent costs, now you can go down to Walmart and you can buy a $79 tent. You can buy a, a tent that will seat six people for $149. A leather tent costs $10,000. $10,000. So now here he gets his contract for uh, 200 tents, for 1,000 tents. I, I say that because the Apostle Paul and Priscilla and Aquila, they made some big money. It cost big money. And so let's just make big money. And if it costs money for your kids to go to college, God's going to enable you to prosper and send them to the best school. If, if it's time for you to do something with your business, God's going to make a way for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah to the Lord. And so they prospered and they were blessed. And it was the Holy Spirit that directed them. The Holy Spirit enabled them to make that money. In the 19th chapter, you read about the Holy Spirit baptism coming to Ephesus. You're going to love this, man. The Holy Ghost fell on 12 men. And those 12 men received the Holy Ghost. And in two years, that church had grown to 200,000 members. 200,000 members. It said it's shaken the world upside down. Well, let me tell you about Ephesus. Ephesus was where the palace was in the temple to Diana. Diana became, had become the official god of Rome. Diana... Uh, was the, the child of Zeus, and they created Diana, which is where Wonder Woman came from. How many ever seen that movie, Wonder Woman? It, it, it was the goddess Diana. And this temple, this temple they built was the most splendid temple ever built. It's considered one of the great wonders of the ancient world. And Wonder Woman what not only was a protector but she was the goddess of prosperity and wealth. So these kings would come and they would sponsor a pillar. That pillar would be wrapped in gold and jewels. I mean, some of those pillars may have cost $20, $30 million. It was exquisite, but it was demons. It was evil. I was in Hong Kong. I went to, I went to this shop, this tailor there, and he was, he was Indian. And he was... He was planting, he was burning incense to this thing. So what is that? He told me the God it was. He said this. I said, what kind of, what, what does that God do? He said, oh, it makes me, makes money for me. Makes me money. I said, really? I said, my God, I serve, prospers me. And I get prospered more than you do. Why do you serve that cheap old God when you can serve a God like I do? <laughs> so, so the next pastor of that church was Timothy. And then the next pastor was the Apostle John. And he moved there to Ephesus. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, moved with him. So when she died, she was buried in Ephesus, Turkey. So John says, I'm sick and tired of this demon here. And everybody thinks that Wonder Woman is blessing them when it's a demon. So he goes over when they're big festival time, and he goes in, and he says, I'm here, and I'm, I'm cursing this place. And the priest came out and said, I'll kill you. I'll kill you right now. You're a thorn in my flesh. And John says, if you're big enough, kill me. If your God's big enough, have Wonder Woman kill me right now. And uh, he did all these enchantments. Nothing happened. And history records that the Apostle John prayed a 48-word prayer. And when he did, the earth shook. The earth shook. The temple altar that was loaded with gold and jewels that they had brought to plant a seed so Wonder Woman would bless them, broke right in half, and a pillar fell and killed the priest who had threatened to kill John. And let me tell you, in 50 years, nobody ever heard of Wonder Woman until Disney came out with Wonder Woman just a number of years ago. I'm here to tell you what the devil thinks. You, you think you can prosper without God. It, you're, you're serving Wonder Woman. When God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he can take, 
He can take whatever you're in and make you the head and not the tail in the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's give the Lord a great big praise for it. From the 20th chapter to the end of Acts, you read how he goes to trial. And uh, he's arrested because he's bringing a large amount of money. Say money. He's bringing this money from the different churches. You're probably talking $100,000 in today's money. He said, I've collected this money from churches all over Turkey, and I'm bringing it here to Jerusalem. We're planting our seeds. And that's when they arrested him. And so now you read the last part. He's, he's locked up in jail. And the second to the last verse in the book of Acts says, and he went to Rome and he rented him a house and lived there for the last two years. Now, how many people you know in jail who got so much money that they don't have to go to jail, they can just rent a house? But that's the Holy Spirit taking care of his people. And I'm here to dis declare to you, learn to talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, direct me. Holy Spirit, guide me. You, you see this situation I'm in? Holy Spirit, you've got the answer. You've got the answer, and if you pray and you can't get it moving, start praying in the Holy Ghost. Start praying in your prayer language. Then start praying in English and listen to yourself. That's the Holy Ghost stirring up. The Holy Spirit, Spirit begins to give you direction, begins to give you guidance. We built, we built a, 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 a miner's lane when we had that property. We built this gym, and we needed to build a balcony in the gym, and we hired a structure engineer and he came in there and he said, I don't think it can be done. It can't be done. Well, there was a guy that he didn't even, he didn't even graduate from high school. But he was filled with the Holy Ghost. His name was Bank Woods. And Bank says, he said, the Holy Spirit can show me how to do it. So he came back the next day and he said, last night I prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to give me direction. He gave me a plan. And he drew it out on a piece of paper. And we took it to that structural engineer. He says, man, this will work. This will work. I don't know why I didn't think of this, but this will work. The Holy Spirit knew how to work that. The Holy Spirit knows how to run your business better than you run, run your business. The Holy Spirit knows, knows clients. The Holy Spirit knows, knows the people who, who's got the money to buy. Listen, the Holy Spirit even knows where the fish are. Here's Jesus. He says um, to Peter, says, cast your nets on the other side of the boat. Jesus said, the works that I do, you'll do also. So hallelujah, use that scripture when you go fishing. Praise God. God will help you to catch fish. It's the Holy Spirit. I want every woman to stand here today. I want you to come down here to the front, scatter out. Don't breathe on anybody. Just come down here to the front. Because I believe that God wants to release entrepreneur anointing on women. For women to prosper, for women to be blessed, for women to impart to their husbands an anointing that will affect them in their pocketbook in the name of Jesus. There'll never be a poor woman in this church. I break poverty off of you. I declare your children shall have a college education, and it won't be at some hinky-dinky little school but it'll be at a school that teaches leadership, that teaches the, the best in the name of the Lord. I declare to you the favor of God's upon you. I declare God's powers upon you to pray, to intercede for your grandchildren, your, your, your children, to pray for your companion. I declare nothing shall be impossible to you. Lay your hand right on your chest. Say, Father God, I belong to you. I don't belong to the devil's crowd. Take out of me anything the devil's put in my life. Take out inferiorities. Take out hurts that have never healed. Heal my mind, my emotions. Of bad things have been spoken over me. Devil, you're a liar. Get out of my life. God's got a plan for my life. I'm going to be successful. That spirit of Priscilla's on me. I'm blessed of the Lord. Angels are going to visit me. 
Holy Spirit, I love you. Speak to my life. Direct my future. Anoint my family. Devil, get out of my house. Take your hands off of me. In Jesus' name, I'm a soul winner. I have power to cast out devils. I have an anointing to heal the sick. In Jesus' name. Now lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, I want you to begin to just praise the Lord right now. Just begin to praise him out loud. Begin to worship him right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If you haven't received the Holy Spirit, you receive it now. Receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May God impart to you that anointing to fall on your kids. On your family in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want all the men to stand. I want everyone to pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, this is the time of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you more than ever before. Fill me afresh and anew. Impart unto me. The gifts of God. Show me how to prosper. Show me how to stay well. And to walk in victory. I'll not fall into sin. I'll not succumb to temptations. But I'm an overcomer. In Jesus' name. I have a friend I went to college with. And his dad, his dad was an accountant for the mafia in Cleveland. And when his mother found out that her husband was involved with the mafia, she divorced him because she wanted to get her kids away from that. But he was pretty tough. He was a pretty tough guy. And, uh, and then he went to Ohio State University, he and his brother, and then God saved him. God saved him, filled him with the Holy Spirit, called him to preach, and he met this Catholic girl who was Holy Ghost filled. She was a world class athlete. She was a triathlete. She was rated fifth in the world. Real skinny lady. And so he went to her hometown and they took a little church. And uh, they had a son. Then they had a second son. Then they had a third son. Then they had a fourth son. Then they had a fifth son. Then they had a sixth son. She said, we're finished. She said, I've been holding on so I'd get a girl. And, uh, and so they're praying, and the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to give you a daughter. Well, there had not been a daughter born in that family in 200 years. And the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to give you a daughter. Now, if you're, if you're mama... And you've done six of them, six nasty boys. Everyone pooped in their pants, just every one of them. And the Holy Ghost said, how, how many know that you'd want to try the spirits? Amen. God gave them a daughter. Her name was Rachel. Rachel became, went to, uh, grew up there in the church. She uh, went to college. She became a lawyer. She started working for the prosecutor there in their, their town. Then she got a job working for the governor. Then she got a job working for the senator. She became his campaign manager. And then President Trump called and said, I want you to come here to Washington and work for me. Now what happened? The Holy Ghost said. Amen. And I'm here to tell you the Holy Ghost will take your children and your children will become better off, do more than you've ever done. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. So, I'm telling you, I know those boys, and those were the roughest, toughest guys I ever saw. And you can imagine one girl, six brothers, you don't think she's tough? Yeah. I guarantee you she can handle her own. But when I was up there, they were, they were baptizing and they start baptizing his sons. Every one of those sons has been called into the ministry. 
God took a fellow who was destined to be in the mafia, saved him, filled him with the Holy Ghost. God, God, through the Holy Ghost, took his family headed for crime, and now they're all preaching the gospel for the glory of God. That's what God will do for your family and your family and your sons, and your daughters, and your children. But it takes to be led by the Holy Ghost. And it takes a mama. Thank God for all the dads. There's things that I can teach my kids that mama can't. But mama, mama runs that house. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. You got to get your kids filled with the Holy Ghost. You got to impart unto your children they're, they're special. They're loved. But they need the Holy Ghost. Amen. And God will raise them up in Jesus' name. Amen. How many glad you came to church today? Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a great day. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. And I want to pray for you before we leave the air. And I invite you to stop whatever you're doing. If you're washing the dishes, if you're cleaning the house, would you stop just for a moment? Because I'm going to ask you to join with me as we pray. Lay your hand right here on your chest. I want you to pray this prayer with me out loud. Speak it out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, you have a plan for my life. And I want to be in the center of your plan. Take off of me what the devil's put on me. And put back in me what the devil's taken out of me. Father, fill me with your love and your power and the Holy Spirit. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Let peace come to my family. And may my home be saved. And may you save America. Lord, let peace come to this land. Heal our nation. And let revival come to America once again. In Jesus' name, amen. I am offering this book this, uh, this week that I know will be a blessing to you, that information, how you receive it, is right there on the screen. So I wait to hear from you. God bless you and thanks for viewing today. With the elections getting closer every day, the voices of the world are getting louder and louder, telling us what we're supposed to think and believe. But the only voice that really matters is the voice of God. What does he think about our upcoming election? In Dr. Bob Rogers' new book, Don't Vote Against God, he addresses this very question. Dr. Rogers examines the core beliefs of both of our political parties and compares them to the Word of God. The book covers issues such as socialism, abortion, support of Israel, and so much more. We would like to make this available to those who will send their best gift in support of the ministry. To receive your copy of Don't Vote Against God, simply go to bobrogersministries.org or call 888-613-6080. Again, call 888 888- 613-6080 to receive this powerful book today. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.